That Tony. is a long what? time ago, man. Oh, I'm really happy to see you. It's really the same form as we had before. Dear friends, today we are at the exposition of the Mathematis Physicale Salon with my dear friend Peter Plasmeyer. And I'm really looking forward to the objects he is going to explain to us today. Tony, I'm very happy to show you our newest exhibition, The Key to Life, 500 years of mechanical automatis or amusement. And it's a new step in our very long partnership. Tony, the beginning of mechanical automata dates back to the high medieval times. And here we have a quarter clapping cock and movement of a tower clock and if you like you can try to wind it up. We bring it to life. We bring it to life, yes. There she goes. It works. We are standing in the middle of one of the greatest collection of mechanical automatas at the end of 16th century. That's a collection of the Prince Electors of Saxony. Behind me, you see a table clock in form of a tower. It's called the Babylonian Tower, and it is a rolling ball clock. The ball appears, takes one minute to come down. Yes. It drops and then the minute hand goes. Wow, that is a nice idea. That's a clever idea. Wow. And it's really cool. Uh, and it goes up by a mechanical lift. That is really a piece of craftsmanship because if you look at the decoration, all the engravings and the polishing and all the tiny little figures who also move. Yeah, you have a lot of different craftsmanship here. So the work of silver and goldsmith and of clockmakers and case makers and carpenters. And you know, Peter, when, when it all started, the rebirth of Lange and Zöne in the 90s, a lot of, lot of these craftsmanship were lost. Because in the years before that, that craftsmanship was not needed anymore. And so we had to really rediscover by literature, reading and trying out loads of trial and error to find the finishing technique and the engraving techniques which we now fortunately can use today. But it is really fascinating because here you can see where it comes from. When I see this Peter, me as a drummer, my heart goes beating way faster than before. The uniform he's wearing uh, is from the beginning of the 18th century and we thought the machine is from the beginning of the 18th century. When we made a movie a couple of months ago of this drama, we saw, wow, that's a machine from the late 16th century. Wow. He has an open chest in form of a heart. And in this heart, you see the moving mechanism of the drumming. And I see, you know, similarities to what we do today, because today we also make watches with fine mechanisms, but also with acoustical mechanisms. Yes, the tick-tack, the tick-tack, tick tick Yeah, the tick-tack is the mechanics, but then, for example, here, the Richard Lange Minute Repeater, it has a striking mechanism. Inside this small watch. Inside this small watch. Wow, sounds good. Tony, that gives me an idea. Have a look there to this machine. This is a music machine and a long case clock made by Johann Gottfried Kaufmann in Dresden around 1780. He founded the manufactory for music machines and 
His music machines run all over Europe in uh, pubs and banquet halls. Uh. It, it wouldn't be a crazy idea if I think, right, when I see this, I would think about a jukebox? Yeah, that's on the direct okay. way to oh. the jukebox. The first World Fair in London, 1851, was for the Kaufmann Manufactory, as well as for Arlange and Söhne, the entry to the international markets. It's really fascinating and it's so great that you showed us really how fascinating the history is, what Dresden had to offer in the old times when it comes to fine, fine mechanics. Thank you. <laughs>